evening. It's a real honor to be in uh, this conference and have the blessing to fill the pulpit these days. It's been, uh, been good to get to know so many of you here, and y'all sure have been good to us. Uh, such a nice place to stay over there, and, and then uh, all the good meals and everything, good time of fellowship, bowling and all today. I told Brother Jimmy I hope my preaching is better than my bowling was. <laughs> if it's not, you're in for a rough night. <laughs> That's all I was about to say. So may God help us. But uh, we have had a great time. And uh, it's been a good time of fellowship. Yeah. Appreciate all of the preaching we've heard. Uh, I'll never... I'll never think the same way about driving a nail after what we heard uh, uh, from Brother Daniel this morning, this uh, afternoon. What a blessing that was. And all of it's been great. Singing's been good. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll try to get right into the Word of God tonight. Psalm 127. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and pray. And then if you would stand with us, we'll reverence the reading of the Word of God. <clears throat> Father, I pray now you bless your Word. I pray you bless this great church and this great people lord all the ones here especially these uh, these missionaries lord and the uh, places of service that you've called them to we pray you bless them and their labor for you we pray you bless this church i pray <clears throat> this be more than just a meeting but this church will get some help from it yeah. mm -hmm. that would uh, encourage them along the way and i pray you could use us to that end tonight in jesus name Amen. Amen. All right, stand with us now. Psalm 127, verse 1. <clears throat> Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. <clears throat> Old children are inheritance of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, last night we talked about trusting God with the origination of your home. Yeah. And trusting God with your spouse and, and your companion, your lifetime companion, your husband or, or your wife, as the case may be. Uh, that's the origination. That's how home starts. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, one man, one woman committed to each other for a lifetime. Right. Brother, we better trust God about that thing. Yes, Amen. Uh, marriage. Yes, uh, now, uh, tonight we want to talk to you about trusting God with the offspring of your home, the children of your home. Isn't it a blessing? I mean, it's just you can't hardly step anywhere around here without these uh, little crumb crunchers running around and <laughs> underfoot everywhere and everything. I mean, what a blessing it is to see. There's so many churches that, I mean, thank God for the old timers, but that's all they have. And it's good to see uh, s some new blood coming along. It's good to see another generation coming yeah, up. Yeah. Uh, but I'm telling you, if we don't trust God for them, we'll lose every one of them. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, I, I have to say, uh, for somebody to be preaching on trusting God with your family and, and, and all of that, uh, it'd be good tonight if you had somebody that had done it all and, and had kids that were you know, maybe up in their 20s and 30s and were married off and had grandkids that were doing good and stuff. But I'm not there. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm right there in the thick of it. I'm, I'm going day by day, one step at a time. We've got 10 down to 1. So we're right, to, right in the middle of it. And I'm not saying I've got it all figured out, that's for sure. And, and on that note, most of these fellows that think they have it all figured out, they don't have it as figured out as you think they do. <laughs> and you all just stare away from a bunch of these parachurch, which ought to be called parasite organizations, uh, that try to suck you out of the church and suck you away from where God wants you. Hey, uh, the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. That's where your family needs to be. Listen to me. 
this church needs your family, and your family needs this church. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, if you're sir. if you're a member here, if you're part of this uh, in this part of the country and everything, that's the way it ought to be. You don't need to be uh, sending your loyalty and your time and your money and so forth to these big international organizations, ATI and all the rest of them out there. I'll just go ahead and say it, Amen. amen. Now, they, they, amen. They're sucking the amen. blood out of good churches. And you ought just leave that stuff alone, go with the Bible, go with your pastor, yeah. go with the yeah. Word of God and the local church, and you'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, but I'm saying I don't have it all figured out. All that to say, I t I've got to watch these rabbits when they jump up. I'll, I'll chase them too far. But uh, all of that to say, I don't have it all figured out, but I'm proud I've got a book that does. Yes, Amen. sir. Amen. I've got a book that does. Yeah. I, I read about one old boy. He said, uh, before I got married, I had six different theories about how to raise kids. He said, now I've got six kids and no theories on how to raise kids. So really, that's about where I am tonight. About all I know to tell you is trust God. Amen. <laughs> and you're going to have to do Amen. that because I don't know who else you can trust. Yeah. And really, we don't need anybody else to trust in. God is enough. God is plenty. But I see a, a thing or two right here. I got here in... Uh, back when the, the, the recession hit and everything, back along in 2008 and, and along in there and the economy got real bad, I kept hearing them talk on the news about uh, these boomerang children. They said they, they get out, they went down the job, got on a place, get out away from mom and daddy, and then when times got tough, they came back. And I got thinking about the Bible doesn't call children boomerangs, it calls them arrows. Mm. I mean, when you shoot an arrow out, it doesn't come back. Amen. So there's a message in there somewhere. I'll let, let some of you preachers uh, take that if you want to. <laughs> you may not want to. I don't know. But, but I, I do want to bring uh, something out here that I was, uh, I was thinking about. And uh, if, you disagree, if you disagree with the way I'm interpreting this or rightly dividing it or whatever, that'll be all right. We'll not fuss about it. Uh, but this is just kind of what the Lord showed me. Verse number four, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of you. I wonder who's the mighty man. I don't believe that's me. I hope it's not. I don't believe that's my wife. I hope it's not. I don't know who that could be, but God, do you? Amen. And so it looks to me like, brother, <laughs> we take these arrows, which are our children, and we put them in the hands of God, and let God put them on his bowstring, and let God shoot them where he wants them to go, and let God take them where he knows that they'll be most effective and where uh, they'll do the most good. Mm. Good. I think... God is the mighty man, and we're going to have to come to the place where we can trust our little arrows, our little children, to trust them in the hand of God. Amen. Yeah, amen. And let God take control. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have our responsibility, and I'm going to try to talk to you about that <clears throat> tonight. But uh, I, I see some people in the Bible that trusted God with their children, with their offspring. What about that Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter number 4? Her son got out working with his daddy and, and got a headache and heat stroke and everything, kicked over and died. And she sent her servant down uh, to the man of God, to Elisha. And, and by the way, when you got problems with your children, the man of God's the first place. After you get on your knees and talk to God about it, amen, the man of God ought to be the next, uh, the next stop. <clears throat> she, she sent her servant that, and her servant said well, it's not a Sabbath day or feast day or anything and she said this it shall be well it wasn't well but she trusted God and said it shall be well right. you know there's times that it may not be well with your children you ever have a day like that you said a day me I man I had a year like that yeah I, I understand <laughs> <laughs> but you can trust God, it shall be well. He ran on down there to the man of God, uh, and, and then she come along behind him there. And he said, is the child well? Here's what she said, it is well. That's trusting God, isn't it? Amen. I mean, he's dead, but it shall be well, and it is well, she said. What about that? What about Luke chapter 15 and that? Uh, prodigal son, we, you know the story most likely. He took his father's inheritance. He took his living, went into the far country, wasted his substance, righteous living, <clears throat> and uh, the famine uh, arose, and, 
and all of that, and how he lived a, a wicked life down there, how he no doubt partied, how he no doubt drank, may have got into drugs, and, and no, no telling what kind of illicit relationships and everything he was down into down there. But brother, I see his father back at the house. His father did not compromise his convictions yeah, yeah. and go into the far country to bring that son back. Right, his yeah. father did not get down there and water in the hog pen uh, to try to win his son back to the house. I think some make that mistake. Yeah, and right, I think that right. is a mistake. Yeah. You know what that father did? I believe he trusted God. I believe there wasn't a day went by he didn't take that boy to the throne of grace on his knees. <clears throat> I believe there wasn't a day that went by uh, that his father didn't ring the prayer bells of heaven on behalf of his son. And I believe every day he'd look off down that road uh, and he'd watch uh, down that road where his son took off heading to the far country and heading to the hog pen, brother. And I tell you one blessed, glorious day, he looked down the road. And you know how I know he was a looking? Because he didn't see him when he came up to the mailbox. Say, man, yeah. he saw him a great way off. Yeah. Right. He trusted God with that son. Lord, he's he's wayward. He's not doing right. He's disgraced my name. He's wasted my heritage. And he's down there in that far country. But Lord, I'm trusting you. You're going to bring him back one of these days. Yeah. If you got one in a hog pen today, you may. I don't know. But brother, if you do, you're you going to have to trust God about it. Right, yeah. I think about Lois and, and Eunice, the godly grandmother and mother of Timothy. The Bible says something about Timothy. It said, but his father was a Greek. Mm -hmm. And that means that Miss uh, Lois, uh, well, I forget now which one was her, my mom, which one was mom. <laughs> anyway, whichever one it was. She messed her life up. She married a heathen. She married a lost man <clears throat> and had a son that through her own mistakes and through, or maybe it happened before she was saved, I don't know. But regardless, uh, it wasn't a good home situation. But brother, she still trusted her son right. into the care of his heavenly father. And, and there you have two books of your Bible, First and Second Timothy. Yeah. I think about Hannah. That can you imagine a man like Eli and his two wicked sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and Hannah took that boy God had given to her and took him down and entrusted them yeah. at the house of God. Yes, sir. That's trust. But I, I want all of these we could we could talk about. But I want to zero in and focus your attention this evening on a lady named Jochebed. Look on back at Exodus chapter number two. Exodus chapter number two. We don't even find her name mentioned in our text. It's only mentioned twice in the Word of God. I have an old Schofield reference Bible. And looking down through his notes, he talks about Moses right here. He doesn't say anything about Jochebed. Jochebed's not one of the most recognized Bible names that you read about. Uh, she's not somebody that a lot of people have looked at and say she really did great, wonderful, and mighty things. But I tell you what, she did. She raised three kids for the glory of God. Yeah. And you talk about trusting God with your kids, brother. She was an example that is hard to surpass when it comes to trust. Yes. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> but uh, what an effect those three children that she raised had on the course of of human history yes, sir. and Bible history yes, sir. and your history yeah. tonight. Yeah. I'm talking about what one godly mama can do or one godly daddy can do as a case may be who will trust their children, do their part, yes, but trust their children into the hands of the mighty man and let him launch them. Amen. Now, I want to tell you, she lived in a time, brother, she had to trust God. And I think we're, we're getting there. We're there, but getting more and more every day. Let me just say a thing or two out of chapter number one that will lead us up to chapter two. I see the crown was against her child. Look at verse number eight. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Now we know later on he put the death penalty on all of the Hebrew boys, right? Yeah. He said, kill them, get rid of them, stomp them out, wipe them out, told the midwives, kill them. Now, it might not be that extreme, although they are killing children today. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, they are. But I'm going to tell you something. State is not the friend of your family. Right. right. And the public education is not the friend of your family. If you're in public school, you, I'm not fussing at you, but I'm just telling you, 
Uh, they're not your friend. They're not on your side. They're not a bunch of fundamental Bible believers up there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> the crown, then I see the circumstances were against her child. Verse 13, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor and made their lives bitter with hard bondage and mortar and brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. You may have some bitter circumstances in your life tonight. I don't know. <coughs> I'm glad you still trust your children to God even in bitter circumstances. Good. Yes, sir. And the crown was against her child. The circumstances was against her child. I, I tell you something else. Look at verse 22. <coughs> and Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. Now, I don't uh, know a whole lot about Egyptian geography, but I knew there's crocodiles. So I say not only the crown was against her child, not only the circumstances were against her child, but amen, the crocodiles were against her child. They were just sitting out there, brother, with their big old jaws and their big old sharp teeth. The minute that baby boy hit the river, brother, it was going to be about two bites, and it's all over with. Just waiting to gobble them up. They some... There's some things right now that are just ready to gobble your children Good up. Preacher. You know that. Amen. I'm going to tell you a bunch of things on the internet that are just waiting to get their teeth into them. Yes. In the fire. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. You better believe that's right. Yes, sir. Right. I think there's some gang members and some dope dealers just waiting to get their teeth into your children. Tonight. Good preaching. Right. Good preaching. I'm not talking about the guy down the street. I'm not talking about the one in the ghetto or the high rise or, or, or in a trailer park. I'm talking about your youngins tonight. Yeah. I'm talking about these right here on this front row. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. There's some, uh, there's some liberals and some socialists and some modernists just waiting to get their teeth into your children. Yes, Hollywood's sir. waiting to get their yeah. teeth yeah. into your children. The fashion industry is just waiting to get their teeth into uh, your children. Yeah. We're going to have to trust God. Yeah. Tell you something. Uh, you, you see all these youngs in here. It's so nice and precious, sweet, good-looking, dressed, right? Amen. Sitting on the front row, pen and a, and a paper and a King James Bible. Amen. All that stuff raised up in godly homes. The devil's after every one of them. You're right. Amen. And you better trust God or they don't have a Chinaman's prayer I'm making. Mm. Preacher was staying with a rancher out west one time. Had a bunch of sheep. And the uh, rancher got up early one morning and came back in. He said, oh, my he said, uh, the wolves got my flock last night. said, they got about 100 lambs. And the fellow said, that's terrible. He said, uh, 100 lambs? He said, how many big sheep they get? He said, all oh, them wolves never get a big sheep if they can get a lamb. Mm -hmm. That's what they're after. Mm -hmm. And brother, you better believe the devil's after these youngins here tonight. Mm -hmm. The crowd was against them. The circumstances was against him. The crocodiles were <clears throat> against him. All Moses had going for him was two midwives, two slave parents, one big sister, but thank God that wasn't it. He also had God. Yeah. Amen. And had a mama that knew how to trust God Wait. with her son. Mm -hmm. So I see here her inspiration, verse number two, and the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him, that he was a goodly child. She hid him three months. Say, what are you talking about inspiration? Anybody could look at a newborn baby and see that's a goodly child. That's God has to help them with that. Amen. <laughs> I mean, when I saw ours the first time, I said, boy, that's, God help them. That's a mess. You know? <laughs> they do better after a while, but you know, only a mama, only a mama can see something good in those uh, early hours. Amen. And I won't get off on all that, but the Bible said she, she saw that he was a, a goodly child. In Hebrews 11, it said she saw that he was a proper child. And watch this. She was not afraid yeah. of the king's Amen. commandment. Right. We've got Baptist preachers today that are afraid of the king's commandment. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, I'm not for being a rebel or a, or a lawbreaker. But when it comes down to obeying this book and obeying God, obeying Hebrews 10, 25, or obeying the king, we better not fear the king's commandment more than we fear God. Amen. Here's a little mama, the old brother. She was not afraid of the king's commandment. She saw this son. She saw him as a gift. She saw his potential. 
Uh, did you know every child has potential? Yes, yes sir. They they good and evil. They they were. Were. Jesse James used to be a child. O.J. Simpson used to be a child. Yeah. And so did J. Frank Norris and Billy Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> she saw him as a gift from God. She saw his potential. She saw him as her responsibility. Mm -hmm. God's giving you a young and he, get, he gave you a responsibility to go right. along with it. Yes, and by the way, he didn't give it to my mom and papa. I, there's a, thank God for good grandparents, but there's a bunch of them raising young ones today that don't need to be. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some that's in bad situations. I understand that. I'm for that. God bless you. But there's a bunch of them where uh, uh, their daughters and in-laws, son-in-laws, all the rest of them trying to uh, work off, pay off that second truck, second boat, vacation house, and everything else, and let my mom and papa raise the grand young ones. May God help us. And daycare centers and everything else. No, it's your responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, it's not this church's responsibility yeah. to raise the young ones either. It's our responsibility to help and to uh, supply and to uh, yeah, yeah. to uh, uh, preach to them and teach to them everything else. But it's, it comes down to it. It's your job, right, yeah. brother, mother right. yes, sir. and daddy. Mm -hmm. you got to see that. you got to understand that. And so I see her inspiration, but then I see her insulation. Verse number three. And when she could hide him no longer, and I'll say this, hide him as long as you can. Yeah. Yes, sir. But you can't hide him forever. Sometimes I get to thinking on what's going on and what's going around us, and I think we ought to just buy us a cave off out in the middle of the wilderness and move off in that cave and just forget this old world, let them all go to hell. and right. But that's not God's plan. Right, right. You're going to have to trust him. Yes, sir. That's good. Uh, she did not well let, let's read it here when she could not longer hide him that's three months there she took for him an ark of bulrushes she's going to have to put him in the river yeah. she's going to have to you, brother you talk about trusting God yes. yeah. mama can you imagine taking your three year old baby mm. putting it in that little ark and sitting in a sail out in that river with those crocodiles, mm. maybe Pharaoh's deputies walking up down the river bank and looking for them. You talk about having to trust God. Yes, sir. Now, let me tell you something. Trusting God does not mean, she said, well, we just throw him out there and hope God teaches him to swim time he hits the water. Yeah, good. No, that's not it. <laughs> you got some responsibility. you got some preparation. I've seen her insulation. Now watch this. <clears throat> she did not integrate him. She didn't just throw him into the river, but she could not isolate him either, keep him from the river. He had to go in the river. Your children have got to go in this world. Mm. They're going to have to buy or sell or trade and, yeah. and uh, have a place and be good neighbors and employees and citizens and all the rest of They're going to We can't. Uh, we, we can't integrate them into this old world, but we can't isolate them from it either. What we've got to do is insulate them. That's yeah. good teaching. And so she made this little ark. And brother, she started insulating. She got her some slime. Best I can tell, that's just clay. We've got a lot of clay in Tennessee. And pitch, that's a tar product. And she got that little ark there. She knows the day's coming. She can't hide that baby anymore. She's going to have to set him sail out on the river. Mm. She goes to daubing and pit and slime and daubing that thing. She's a rubbing that pitch on it. She's a rubbing that slime on it, brother. No doubt tears are running down her face. Yeah. Oh, God help. I'm going to have to turn my baby loose. But I'm going to insulate him best I can. I'm going to protect him best I can. I'm going to try to put something around him, put some protection around him that when he floats out in that river, he's got something to keep him from the sinking. Now, let me tell you something, mamas and daddies tonight, we better be a putting something around our young ones that will keep them from sinking when they get out on that river. Yeah. How are we going to insulate them? How are we going to keep them from sinking? Let me give you a thing or two right here. How you can insulate your youngins? <laughs> nothing deep tonight, nothing you don't already know. Just a reminder. Number one, the switch. <laughs> you insulate them with a switch. Yeah, right. You listening? Amen. Yeah. 
Proverbs 13, verse 24. He that spareth the rod hateth his son. Right. Some of you young and tonight might say, boy, wait, my mom and daddy wail on me. They hate me. No, they'd hate you if they didn't do that. That's right. Amen. That's, right. That's true. <clears throat> and uh, Proverbs 22, 15, foolishness. Yeah. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of the child. They've got that old Adam in them. They've got that old sin nature. They're by nature children of wrath, even as others. Amen. But the rod and reproof driveth it far from. I remember Brother Olaf saying, my daddy couldn't just plumb beat the devil out of me, but he sure could make him take a long vacation. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was telling the brother back there, when I was just real young, we got enrolled. Mama started enrolling us in dancing lessons. She had an old forsythia bush. That, they have the yellow flowers on this time of year. Grew right out in the yard. She'd go cut a switch off that thing. And brother, she'd start laying that on and I'd go to dancing. Amen. That was my dancing lesson. Right <laughs> we were real patriotic. They laid on the stripes and we saw the star. <laughs> so didn't that mess up your psyche? I mean, didn't that warp your personality? Well, that's kept me out of jail and it kept me doing right and put the fear of God yeah. in me and let me know there's a consequence yeah. of what's wrong. That's what's wrong with this country today. That's why they'll burn, loot, and riot and carry on like like a bunch of wild dogs in the street because they've been raised up with no consequences for doing wrong. You're right. Amen. <clears throat> Some of y'all may remember the name Billy Kelly, that great evangelist out of South Carolina. My grandfather knew him pretty good. And he was a bear hunter and coon hunter, had a bunch of dogs all the time. <clears throat> had this a Yankee preacher down one time having supper with him. And uh, all these dogs started barking. And, you know, nothing like more racket than a bunch of coon dogs. Did you know it? I mean, they're just making all kinds of racket out there. Old Brother Kelly went to that old screen door, holding it by, and said, shut up! And it just got quiet as a graveyard. That fellow from up north said, I wish I would get my kids to do that. <laughs> he said, bless God, if you wail on them like I wail on them dogs, they would do like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why they'll run you crazy, make you pull your hair out, get old before your time, and uh, instead of being a blessing like God intended them to be, be a, turn into a curse of the devil when you don't make them do right and don't yeah. beat the devil out of them. Right, right. That's plain preaching, but I believe it's right. right. So, <clears throat> so what do we do? We've got to answer like this ark. Yeah. They're going to have to go out on the river. We don't want them to sink. we got to daub it, amen. we got to get them something to insulate them, keep them from sinking. Good. So we're going to have to put a switch to them. Yeah. Number two, <clears throat> sweat. That'll yeah. insulate them. Lamentations chapter 3, verse number 27. The Bible said it is good for a man yeah. that he bear the yoke in his youth. Good. That means it's bad for him if he doesn't. Right. And the yoke is work. Old timers had a saying, it's not a verse of scripture, but I believe it's right. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you keep them busy, and that'll keep them out of a heap of trouble. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, sweat. We, uh, we put our garden out stuff, plow with mules, and I've got a pair of mules that's just green. They're not really broke yet, and I was, had them hooked to the disc the other day. Pretty day, you know, son come out, I said, I'm going to get the garden disc, bought some paint. I said, kids, y'all paint the fence. That's why, if y'all notice, they've got paint all over them. <laughs> we tried to scrub it off, but I wanted to leave them some hide. You know, I didn't want to take the hide off with the paint. <laughs> They're making that paint pretty good these days. And so I was, uh, <laughs> I was desking around there with those mules, getting everything broke up, and had it about like I wanted it. And I was done and, and took off to the barn. And those mules have been in that soft dirt. You know, that'll weigh them down, slow them down pretty good. When I pulled them out of the garden and, and got on hard ground, say I told you they weren't broke, they just plumb took off and liked to run away from me, liked to got away from me. And boy, I, I finally got them stopped, turned around, and I said, you're going right back in that garden, and you're about to take and run out of your dictionary. And I got them back in there, and brother, I was a go I mean, sweat was a pouring off of them. Their old legs were trembling, you know. <clears throat> and about that time, Caroline come up, 
And she said, uh, uh, she said, uh, my arms are hurting. Can we stop this painting now? I said, no, you can stop that painting. When you get that fence done, that's when you can stop that painting. I figured if it's good enough for the mules, it ought to be good enough for the young ones. <laughs> I'm telling you, getting out there and working and sweating and doing something right. and learning how to perform a task and get it done and be responsible will do a world of good for our young ones. Say, so when I live in town, we don't have a garden. Go in the backyard, dig a hole four foot deep, and make them fill it in. I mean, do something. <laughs> make them do something. They need the sweat. All right? So the switch, the sweat, and then the scriptures. Yeah. David. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? You'll clean youngs by taking heed thereto according to thy word. That's good preaching. Our brother mentioned it last night. And that from a child. Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, yeah. which are able to make thee wise yeah. unto salvation. You won't save children. You better get the book in them. Yes, they sir. need it here. They need it at the house. Yeah. Uh, they need to read it. They need to memorize it. They need to learn how to study it. Yeah. And they get the Word of God in them, brother. That'll add a layer of insulation. Good It'll Good keep reason. them from sinking when they get out in that old river. <coughs> I, I can... I could talk a lot more about that, but the switch, the sweat, the scriptures, supplication. Yeah. Old Job, what's the Bible say right there in Job chapter 1? He rose early in the morning and offered sacrifices for each one of his children. You know what he said? He said, could be that one of my sons has cursed God in their heart. Now, he had three daughters, but he's worried about his sons. So there's a message in there somewhere. I'll let you think about that, but... Anyway, but every day, early in the morning, he's on his knees praying for his children. There's a preacher one time preaching kind of like I am about families that neglect the family altar and neglect the word of God and neglect prayer and so forth. And there's a mother and her little daughter sitting there <clears throat> about halfway back and he's preaching like that. And that little girl, she just didn't know any better. She turned around and just as loud as could be, she said, he, she said uh, Mama, is he talking about you? Mm. Oh, you talk about getting under conviction out of the mouth of babes, amen. I'm telling you, brother, we need to insulate them with our supplication, with our prayers. Yeah. I heard a testimony here recently about a man started drinking when he was about 13. All through his teenage years, he'd go out, stay out all night drinking, and uh, come in about uh, uh, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, hear his mom out there in that smokehouse calling his name in prayer, 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. When he was coming in from drinking, she was out in that smokehouse ringing the prayer bells of heaven on his behalf. Mm -hmm. you, don't you think that doesn't put something in young and heart? Yes, sir. The old song said, if I could hear my mother pray again, if I could hear her tender voice as then, we better insulate them. I'm telling you, they're going to have to float. They're going to have to go. We don't want them to sink. We're going to have to get some pitch on that thing, get some slime on that thing, get yeah. something to insulate it. Yeah. Now, one more thing about that. They'll have to be insulated with salvation. I'm going to tell you something. You can homeschool them, teach them their ABCs. You can have them memorize half of the New Testament and quote the Bible by the chapter you can teach them all the rules, regulations, and standards. You can have them separated. You can have them <coughs> where they can dot all their eyes, cross all their teeth. You can have them where they know all the rules, have all the do's and don'ts now. But, brother, if they don't get born again, if they don't get saved by God's grace, they're not going to make it. And from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. I'm glad tonight children can be saved. I'm glad tonight Jesus loves the little children. I'm glad tonight he said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Amen. I got saved when I was seven. My wife got saved when she was five. <clears throat> and any child in here that'll understand that you're a sinner and understand he's a savior, you can be saved tonight. You say, you think a child can be saved? Well, I'll ask the question, well, can an adult be saved? <laughs> Jesus said, except you be converted yeah. and become a little child, That's right. you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of God. Oh, we've got to get them saved. We've got to get them born again. How do you do that? 
when the world and its wisdom do not got it. Please God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I tell you, I remember when I was seven years old and an old fashioned, he didn't have all his, looking back on it, he didn't dot all his T's and cross, well, dot his I's and cross his T's, right? But he had the gospel, right? He had hellfire and brimstone, right? And I remember when I was seven years old, I heard that, and I understood I was a sinner, and I understood he was a savior. I understood I needed to be saved. I tell you, thank God for family altar. Thank God for mom and daddy. They knew the scriptures and know the scriptures, but we, there's no replacement for that old-fashioned hellfire and brimstone preaching, and our children need to be under it, and they need to hear it so the Holy Ghost of God can convict their heart and draw them to salvation and get them Born again hey. young age. Yeah. Hey, we got to insulate them. Insulate them with salvation, with supplication, with the scripture, with sweat, and with the switch. Oh, may God help us. They're going to have to float one of these days. We sure, <coughs> sure don't want them uh, to sink. Well, let me hurry and uh, try to close out here. We've seen her inspiration, we've seen her insulation. I want you to see now her identification. <clears throat> you know the story, I think, how that she launched that little ark out into the <clears throat> Nile River there. How uh, Pharaoh's daughter comes along and draws that ark out, takes that baby home and raises him. And, and you know the story. But look at verse number 11. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren. Who are his brethren? That's the Israelites. He was raised in Pharaoh's house. He was raised by Pharaoh's daughter. He could have been in line to sit on the throne of Pharaoh when Pharaoh died. But brother, he did not identify with Pharaoh. He did not identify with Egypt. He did not identify with this old world. Amen. He counted the people of God as his brethren. He said, I'm one of God's people. I'm one of the Israelites. I'm a follower of the true and living God. How'd he get like that? I'll tell you what, he had a mama knew how to trust God with her children. Look on over at Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Boy, I tell you, we could we could bring out so many things right here, but we'll just uh, try to hasten on. Hebrews 11, verse number 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, well, I'll let, I'll let you find it there. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 23. All right. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused. May God give us some children that know how to refuse some things. Amen. Amen. Well, there's going to be a lot of things offered to them. Yeah, They're right. going to be called in a lot of different directions. Yeah. They're going to have to learn how to say yeah. Amen. no. Amen. 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 Right. You know where it starts? It starts with learning how to say no to this right here. Right. Yes, sir. They've got to learn it. Yes, sir. Refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who, he, who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the spring from the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by, a, as by dry land, which the Egyptians assigned to do were drowned. You know what I see right there? As arrows in the hand yeah. of the mighty man. Here's what this little Hebrew mother did. She said, Lord, you gave me this baby. But I can't keep him. I can't handle it. There's too much against him. I'm going to have to put him back in your hand. Amen. Amen. 
Lord, here's you gave me this arrow. Now you're gonna have to take it back. I've done everything I can do. I've insulated him. I've dogged him. I've slimed him. I've done everything I can do to keep him from sinking. Lord, he's he's yours. You know what God did, brother? He put him on that bowstring yeah. and drew him back. Shot him right into the heart of Pharaoh. Brought down Pharaoh and his whole army, the world power of that day. That's what can happen. Yeah, it's good when we trust God with our family. You probably heard of John and Charles Wesley. Yeah. You might not have heard of Susanna Wesley. That was their mother. Mm-hmm. Know how many kids she had? Seventeen. How would you ladies like to take care of seventeen kids? See, her husband's gone most of the time. Mm-hmm. Now that's another message for another time, but anyway, she was left by herself taking care of seventeen kids with no electric iron and washing machine and dryer and stove and running water unless you run to the well and fetch it, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> 17 kids. You know what she did? One hour every day, she'd lock herself in her bedroom and said, nobody bother me, I'm gonna pray for my children. One yeah, hour amen. every day. Amen. She raised two sons, one John, one Charles, they want another man of the Lord named George Whitfield. George Whitfield came to this country and the greatest revivals we've ever had in our history broke out <laughs> under the preaching of George Whitfield. Turned this country on its head upside down or right side up rather for God. And just a few years after that, we had our war for independence. And while the French country was weltering in the blood of its people as the blood of that godless revolution ran like rivers through the streets of France. Our country was birthed in freedom and in, uh, under the principles of the word of God and on the foundation of God's word. All because, brother, one godly mama had trusted God with her family and let God take those arrows that he had given her and she entrusted them back to him. And God launched them into the heart of this country. And you and I are sitting here today on these pews in this church, in this land of the free and home of the brave. And we owe a great deal of what we're enjoying tonight. That one godly mama trusted God with her family. Our Father, I pray you bless your word. Oh, Lord, we pray for these young ones. Uh, may you protect them. May you bless them. May you help them. Bless these parents uh, or those of us that are parents. Lord, we have a great responsibility. Help us to trust you. And I pray you take these heirs around here and launch them in a great and mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Pastor. Thank you, Brother Pastor.